Now for this question, we've got g of x equals x squared minus 4x plus 1 then for x valid between 0 and 5 inclusive. And we've got to find the range of g of x. Now to find the range of any function, what I would always encourage you to do is draw a sketch, a sketch of your function here. Now this is clearly a quadratic and a positive quadratic at that so we know it's going to be a parabola, a u-shaped curve okay but really to get to grips with this what I would want to do is complete the square you don't have to there are other ways you could sketch it but completing the square I think is the easiest way of doing this particular problem so assuming that you're familiar with completing the square what we do is we just have a bracket with a squared on the outside and we write an x at the beginning here and we halve the coefficient of x. The coefficient of x is minus 4 so if we halve that we get minus 2. And if we square this out now we're going to get x squared minus 4x plus 4. x squared minus 4x plus 4. But it doesn't quite look like that so we subtract the 4 that we created off the minus 2 all squared and then put back the plus 1. So this is identical to x squared minus 4x plus 1. Let's just clean this up. This is going to be x minus 2 all squared then minus 3. And because we've completed the square it makes, as I say, the sketching of g of x very easy. Because it just relies on transformations of graphs. If we have our x-axis like so and we'll have y here, y equaling g of x. We take basically the graph of x squared which would be a parabola passing through the origin and then x minus 2 causes that graph to shift to the right by two places so it's now going to be like something like this bottoming out on here at 2, 0 and then with the minus 3 the graph shifts down three places. So I'll just run through that again for you. What we've got then, I could actually just sketch it on here I would imagine. Let's just put x squared, the graph of x squared would look something like that. Okay, And then what we do is we take that graph and we slide it two units to the right and then it goes down three units. Okay, So we just push it down something like that. Now I've taken care here by the way just because this graph where does it cross the y-axis? It crosses here at the point when x is 0 and you'll notice that when x is 0 if you put it into here you'll get 1 or if you put it into here you've got minus 2 all squared which is 4, 4 take 3 which is 1 so it crosses at 1. Now this would be the graph of g of x then if it was for all real values our domain was for all real values but it's not okay it's for 0 to 5 so we're only interested in part of the positive side of this graph. So this part here has got to disappear. So we'll take that part out, okay? Now remember, we did know this part down here where the curve bottoms out. It was taking the original graph, two units to the right and three down. So this point here is at 2 minus 3. So our range, okay, goes from this lowest point here which is at minus 3 and then it goes up to a point up here where x is 5. Now the question is what value do you get for g of 5? Well let's find out, okay? Let's see what g of 5 is. Well g of 5, okay, is going to be 5 squared, 25 then, minus 4 by 5, 20, and then plus the one on the end. So we've got 6. g of 5 is 6. So if I was to assume, let's just extend this x-axis out a bit further, okay? Let's just push it out a bit further. 
If I take that point there, say, as 5, then this point up here has a y coordinate of 6. So if I come across there, that point there is 6. So our range goes from the bottom here, minus 3, all the way up to 6. So we can say that then as therefore the range of g, I'm going to put g of x, okay, the range of g of x is going to be g of x is greater than or equal to this value, minus 3, and less than or equal to the 6. We have equals to on these because we can take the values of 0 and 5. Okay? Well, that brings us now to the end of this question.